Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89. Hello again, everyone, and thanks very much for joining us. Earlier this year, State Senator Jim Hendren of Gravit announced he was leaving the Republican Party and declared himself an independent. At the same time, he unveiled Common Ground Arkansas, an organization that he promised would bring together Arkansans of all political persuasions who believe that pragmatism should out-trump partisanship. This week, Common Ground Arkansas announced its board of directors, as the senator had promised. It includes a former Arkansas Republican speaker, a Democrat formerly of the House, two other former state legislators, including the mayor of one of the state's largest cities, a couple of Arkansas CEOs, not including the senator, and a corporate attorney from Walmart. Senator Jim Hendren joins us now. Senator, thanks very much, as always, for your time. We have, as you indicated, we've got, or Common Ground Arkansas now has a board of directors. What does this board say? Well, this board says they want to work together to move Arkansas forward. It's, uh, it's a great group of people that represent the best of Arkansas. As you, as you talked about in your lead in there, we have people from banking, from law, from former military, manufacturing, uh, former legislators, farmers, we just have an incredibly diverse group, uh, but we share one thing in common. That is what we want to see Arkansas begin to focus on real problems, begin to look for leaders who believe in working across the aisle to serve uh, Arkansas instead of serving uh, one of the other partisan parties. So uh, I'm very proud of the board. We, uh, we're excited to release the names. We've had several meetings and they've gotten to know each other. And I'm gonna tell you, there's a, a lot of diversity on views and opinions about issues, but there's unity on the fact that Arkansas can do better and Arkansas can find a way to elect pragmatic leaders. We've done that many times in the past and we just need to reverse the trend of extreme partisanship ruling the day in Arkansas. These men and women who are now your board, Senator, what have you charged them with? Are, are we going to see them out now in the state doing what? Well, it's really the strategic view uh, of Common Ground Arkansas to help us make the decisions. Because again, the whole purpose of Common Ground is find areas that even though we may disagree on some uh, different issues, we agree on some major premises to move Arkansas forward. And that's what the board's major task is, is develop the strategy and the policy that Common Ground is going to engage in, to make those positive changes that everybody wants to see in Arkansas. You'll see some out, uh, helping in the public effort. Uh, the vice chairman, Archie Schaefer, is going to be leading up our campaign and recruitment and uh, uh, efforts. Uh, former Speaker Carter is going to be leading up our policy development team. So we have kind of rolled out or rolled out roles to different members of the board to, to share the work and provide some leadership. Uh, but, but overall, uh, we've had so much support from the grassroots people of Arkansas. Uh, I, I'm pleased that the board is from all parts of Arkansas, so we have relationships in almost every part of the state. Uh, they've got a lot of work to do, and I know they'll be pitching in uh, and because they believe in the cause just like I do. This is going to require a little bit of money. Now, as a C4, you're not required, I don't think, to disclose, but can you? would it not uh, benefit the credibility of the organization, Common Ground Arkansas, if, if you were transparent in terms of your underwriting? Well, I've never been a fan of dark money and not disclosing and rules that C4s play under, but we all know that that's the rules of the game as they stand today. There's reasons for wanting to disclose, and when we are required to, for instance, as, as we set up PACs and, and engage in specific campaigns, we will certainly disclose and reveal all of the uh, contributors in those specific efforts as required by law. But with regard to the C4, uh, there are, again, I, I see the value in some anonymity. I see I see the value in not necessarily putting all the cards on the table. And so we're going to continue to play by the rules of C4 corporations, just as the NRA does, just as uh, Americans for Prosperity and many other groups that have uh, been effective in the political realm under that umbrella. And we're certainly not going to enter into a fight and disarm ourselves first. Uh, Senator, you, are you already in the business or, or are you about already recruiting candidates yes we are we've had discussions with some very in incredibly uh 
gifted and dedicated people who want to serve. Uh, they've reached out to us. We've had many people give us recommendations on who to go and seek to serve. And Steve, it's not just about unseating incumbents. It's also about filling new seats with the right kind of people. As redistricting happens, there's going to be a huge uh, opportunity to find new people to enter in uh, and serve in Arkansas politics. Common Ground is trying to find the right kind of people. Because if we don't, we know we're going to continue to go further and further apart with more and more partisanship. So absolutely, we've uh, had great discussions with several, and I think uh, there'll be many more in the future. Well, as you as you notice, the redistricting is coming up, and that's going to be central, will it not, to your ability to not only recruit, but perhaps to achieve some success at the polls? It absolutely is. And I tell our board, the stars have aligned for some real change in 22. We've got every member of the legislature up for re-election because of redistricting. And because of the redistricting and the migration and the growth patterns in Arkansas, there's going to be a lot of change. There's going to be open seats, brand new seats. There's going to be, uh, you know, and the legislators don't like to hear this, but there's going to be some incumbents forced to run against each other because some districts are going to have to expand uh, in order to make uh, the representation equal across the state. So all those things play together to give us a real opportunity I would say a once in a decade opportunity to make real change, and we're going to seize the opportunity. Well, there will be some changes, obviously, sir, in district lines, in some cases, some profound changes. But will the political temperature of Arkansas change to your advantage? Well, that, I think it can. And again, that's the purpose of Common Ground Arkansas, is it needs to change. Uh, I remember when bipartisanship was expected and normal, not unusual and and demonized. I remember when uh, we, people used to work together and we used to have legislators who were thoughtful and and took very serious consideration about the roles of a legislator versus the executive branch versus the judicial branch and our, our obligation to uh, uh, completely support and defend the Constitution. Those things have gone by the wayside now. So I think it can change. I think Common Ground is going to be a big factor in making that change. And I believe the voters are ready for that. I mean, again, I continue to get letters and emails from across the state. People say, how can I help? We want something different. So I think it, there's a hunger for it to change. We just need an organization to make that happen. And that's what Common Ground's about. In conversation, sir, earlier, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned to me that you thought uh, a, 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 it was very instructive, the level of primary turnout, not, not just the general, but the primary turnout as well. Uh, indicated some uh, an, an opening, if you will. Well, we've got legislators who've been in office for 10 years with 9% of the registered voters who have voted for them in their district because the, the winner is determined in a primary, which has not necessarily very high turnout if it's an off year, and then they're not uh, opposed in the general or they have a very weak opponent in the general. Well, 9% is certainly not representative of an entire uh, district. So our and, and I believe a lot of that is is because people are not uh, engaged in the primary process because they're basically tired of uh, being completely overrun by the extremes. So, yeah, I think it's uh, our part of our agenda is going to be to encourage voter turnout. And we know part of that is going to be getting them some candidates that they can be excited about again, instead of having to feel like they have to choose between two extremes that neither one of them fit what they believe is uh, the right path for Arkansas. So voter turnout uh, in both general and primary is going to be a, a huge uh, effort for common ground. You also, send, uh, Senator, indicated that you, well, you told me, and I think you've told some other people, the center is larger than we think it is. How large is it, and where is the center these days? The center is homeless these days, and even the polling identifies in Arkansas that there is 39% of the people identify as independent, where only 40% identify as Republicans, and 25% as d Democrats. So, and I think the number's even higher than that when you get right down. And if you look at historically at Arkansas, we are historically an independent state. We are a state that will vote for a Republican for president and Democrat for U.S. senators. We're a state that will be very conservative on social issues, but then will vote for minimum wage increases and medical marijuana. The voters of Arkansas have a history of being independent, but unfortunately, neither of the parties addresses that independent streak in Arkansas, uh, that center streak, uh, because of our primary process. And, and that's part of the things we'll be looking at trying to change to make it where 
voters don't continually have to feel like there's no home for them because both parties have gone too far to the left or too far to the right. Let me follow on that, if I may, Senator, because in announcing your board, you uh, one of the goals you said of, of Common Ground Arkansas will be uh, to find individuals and, and to shape policies that will address the, quote, real problems of Arkansas. We have failed to do that in your estimation? We have. I mean, uh, I've been in the legislature since the 1990s, and uh, while we've made some progress, we still see Arkansas lagging in some very important uh, areas, and we don't focus on them. We know we need to do more, more work in education. We know we need to do more work in child hunger. We know we need to do more work in broadband. We know we need to do more work in so many of these areas in voter turnout. We're 49 in voter turnout, uh, and we're not addressing those problems. Uh, I, I ran a bill to say, why don't we spend some time talking about 4,700 kids we have in foster care instead of some of the other issues that seem to be sucking all the oxygen out of the debate at the Capitol? That's a real problem. 4,700 kids looking for a family, and it got almost no attention in the General Assembly. So I do think there's a lot of real problems like that, that uh, people are frustrated that Arkansas is continuing to focus on the attention getters, the, the issues that appeal to the base, rather than really solve the problems of Arkansas. We've got so much good going on in Arkansas. We've got some of the best mountain biking, some of the best natural resources, some of the best state parks in the entire nation. We have one of the best qualities of life, but we have to overcome some of these real problems if we want to continue to move Arkansas forward. And, and finally, this, Senator, you, you, you said also in, in announcing the board that you, you were hoping to recruit and find and identify candidates, promote candidates, who would be loyal to, whose first loyalty was to the, to the citizens of their, of their district. I'm paraphrasing there. When I look back at some of the primary and general election returns, they got, many of them got overwhelming majorities. How are they not being loyal? Well, they got majorities of a minority of the vote, Steve, would be my contention. We have very few candidates, legislators, who are elected with more than 51% of the electorate. Now, they may have trounced in a primary or they may have trounced in a general election because of the dynamics of the way our primary pro process is set up today. But I tell you, when I come back to my district from uh, the legislative session, the issues that I'm asked about are not the ones that are getting all the attention in the General Assembly. And that's what I mean by that is we're we're pandering to the base, the, the small minority base that's going to elect us. We're pandering to gun issues or we're pandering to issues that ignite our base rather than the ones when I go to the coffee shop or when I go to the Kiwanis Club or when I go to, the as I went to last uh, week at the Memorial Day service in Bella Vista, people come up and talk to me about real problems. And I continue to hear from them. They are so ready for something new and different. So uh, I, again, I think it's uh, that's what I mean, Steve. Is there's I my I think there's a disconnect between what the legislature is doing and serving up to the people versus what I hear from the people in the district. Senator Jim Hendren of Common Ground, Arkansas. Many many thanks for your time. Come back soon. Thank you, Steve. And we'll be right back. And we're back, a couple of voices now to assess Common Ground Arkansas and the landscape it hopes to reshape. From the right, former Speaker Jeremy Gillum now with the University of Central Arkansas and from the left, Democratic strategist Michael Cook. Gents, thanks for coming aboard. Mr. Speaker, we'll start with you. Uh, your assessment, now you, you heard, uh, you heard your, uh, uh, Senator Hendren, both of you did. Uh, Mr. Speaker, your thoughts. Well, I think he's obviously uh, tapping into a lot of discontent. Um, or I think the the constituents of Arkansas are reaching out to him. I think he's he's sensing that uh, and realizing that there needs to be a, a different dynamic. Uh, obviously, uh, in some conversations I've had with him at the Capitol, um, you know, he's he's very passionate about this and. And I think, uh, you know, the organization that he has, uh, has founded now with the board members, uh, I think they will be, uh, you know, a, a factor moving forward. Uh, how much and how quick it will be, I think, depending on a lot of external factors and inflection points uh, that are out of their control. But uh, I think, uh, you know, he's obviously, uh, you know, getting feedback and sensing uh, that our Kansans are looking for something different, um, how big uh, of a slice of that pie will remain to be seen over the next couple of years, surely. Yeah, Michael Cook. I, I just don't think the pie is 
as big as uh, Jim Hendren thinks it is, you know, when you look at the actual election results last year in 2020, Donald Trump got 62 percent of the vote. It was one of his highest vote percentages in the nation. Uh, this, sadly, at least as a Dem from a Democratic perspective, it's a Republican ruby red state. Um, you know, the, the 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 majority seems to be. Uh, with Republicans, which is why they hold the governorship, the Senate seats, the congressional seats. Uh, you know, obviously, if you talk to, you know, insiders and some folks, yeah, a lot of people are not happy. Uh, but in, in my personal opinion, uh, I, you know, when he says there's extremism on both sides, I, I don't I take issue with that. In my opinion, I think it's more the Republicans who have gone to the extreme. I mean, when 70 percent of Republicans believe that Donald Trump, that the election was stolen in 2020, that tells you something about the state of the Republican Party. Uh, the Democrats, at least in Arkansas, have been fighting for, you know, education. You know, he's talking about the minimum wage, you know, that was put before uh, a few years back. Arkansas Republicans in the legislature tried to kill it through various uh, technical means. So I don't think the, the center is as big as he is. And, and then I, I would add one last point is that you know, it, it all comes down to, you know, getting people elected. And if they put up, let's say they put up Jim Hendren or Davey Carter for uh, for governor, who I think are both, you know, good-hearted people and their hearts in the right place. But from a Democratic perspective, why would you vote for a Republican who probably agrees with Sarah Sanders on 90 to 95 percent of the issues as opposed to a credible Democrat? So yeah, I think well, they have some real... Michael, one of, one of Mr. Hendren's points was that uh, he noted that participation in some of the primaries was quite low, suggesting to him a, a certain malaise, even among right-leaning or Republican or conservative voters. Your thought on that? Well, it comes, but it still comes down to the general election. Uh, you know, again, I, I point back to the, those numbers that Donald Trump got in 2020 with 62 percent of the vote, that doesn't seem to be a malaise or a discontent with the Republican uh, brand here in the state. So, you know, maybe he takes off a... There are some Republicans who are not happy with where the state of the uh, Republican Party, and I'm sure he'll he'll bring those uh, out and get, you know, get, get some of them. But when Democrats get about 30, you know, in 2018, the highest was about 36, 37 percent on a statewide level, I, I just don't see any Democrats peeling off to vote for an independent candidate. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Jeremy Gilliam, uh, uh, your quote, uh, tapping that, that Mr. Hendra was tapping into discontent. To follow up on Michael's point there, how much discontent do you register out there? Well, I think right now that that amount is, is probably a little smaller because we're in kind of this, you know, post-election uh, lull here, but I think as it moves forward, and I think there's also uh, other variables and factors that are going to happen nationally uh, that may expand that. Uh, so, like if I was looking at it right now, I don't necessarily disagree with uh, Michael's assessment that uh, that number's a little probably a little shrunk right now. But I think uh, there's a potential that it increases considerably over the next couple of years. Uh, and I and I would probably say that you know the center that that I think we all are looking at here is center right. I think, uh, and that that's testament to the uh, the statistics that that Michael mentioned. But um, how far right uh, that expands and goes over. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of folks that voted for Trump, uh, but it was a binary choice. And I think that's kind of the thing that uh, Senator Hendren is kind of referring to is is where he he believes those weren't all pro Trump votes as much as it might have been well, I'm anti-Democrat or there are other factors in place. So, uh, and I think that's that's kind of where that group is is sensing the movement and the potential there is being able to, to lay out policies and, and present candidates that provide them an alternative to uh, to, to that level uh, that, that we've seen in the last uh, four years. Yeah, follow up on that if you would, Michael Cook, because plainly what Mr. Hendren's group would have to do to achieve a certain common ground, I think, would be to move the state's political identity a bit to the left from where it is now. It's always, it's always been center right. 
Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, Arkansas Democrats, uh, for, for the most part, have been center to center right. That's how you get elected in Arkansas. We are we are a conservative state and have been even when uh, Democrats uh, ran all the offices. They've always run as, you know, moderate to conservatives. You know, I, I, again, I look at things from getting elected perspective. Uh, you know, how do you, you know, to win the governorship or attorney general or whatever office, it's a plurality. I mean, how much of the Republicans, you know, just in terms of raw numbers, could you pull over? Is it 10, 12 percent that are not happy of in the, in the Republican in a general election? Is it, you know, five, six percent of Democrats that are not crazy about whoever the nominee is for governor or attorney general, whatever it is? I mean, that gets you about 15, 16 percent. That's, you know, we, we can mess around and disagree with the numbers, but I don't think it's enough to overcome in a general election, the Republican base and the Democratic base. I think whoever they put up for pretty much any office probably comes just comes in third. It's just the nature of independent candidacies. Well, uh, consider this too, Michael, and, and uh, reflect on this, both of you, if you would. Uh, Mr. Hutchins, Governor Hutchinson, the titular head of the party, well, he is the head of the party in Arkansas, has been willing to put his finger in Mr. Trump's eye. Two of the four members of the congressional delegation, Mr. Womack and, uh, and Mr. Hill, have both been uh, willing to uh, go against uh, Mr. Trump's express wishes, at least, uh, uh, well, at the national level. What does that say about the electorate? Does that offer the center right a bit more hope? Well, I think you know, every district's going to be different. And that was, I think, a point that uh, even Senator Hendren uh, mentioned earlier, just legislatively. But I think from a congressional standpoint, uh, you know, both of those representatives have different districts in the fourth or the first. And so um, I think as you move forward, I, I don't know that you can necessarily paint that uh, broad statewide. And, and that may be why, uh, you know, Common Ground focuses more on the state level legislatively um, this next cycle and maybe kind of doesn't maybe go statewide right off the bat um, as they kind of move forward in, in their developing processes. Yeah, uh, Michael, I would note also that the first and the third of the districts, Mr. Hill and Mr. Uh, Womack's districts, those are the most urban districts in the state. Right. You, you know, you're talking about uh, Governor Hutchinson, you know, kind of poking the eye. Well, of course, he's term limited. He didn't have anything to, to really worry about in Arkansas politics right now. And then with that one vote for uh, Congressman Hill and Congressman Womack, you know, at, at the end of the day, they're still, you know, they're still going to take care of their base. Maybe they have, it's you know, one vote that they, you know, on the commission. Uh, but again, I, I just don't see that enough to say, okay, common ground is going to be able to win elections because of those two votes for those two gentlemen. In fact, I'd be curious to see if, if anyone, if they may have primary opponents, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Well, and, and, well, and I have to say that Common Ground Arkansas is not totally unique. You have, uh, for several years now ago, it, it's, it's kind of nascent, but there's the organization known as No Labels. And in Congress, there's the Problem Solvers Caucus. And <laughs> we're five months now into the new uh, presidential administration. We haven't solved a great many problems up there. Well, yeah, and I no, think it, one thing too. Ahead, and, oh, sorry. No, I <laughs> the, uh, they, you know, it, it's not necessarily from what I'm seeing from the materials and and hearing, uh, you know, uh, from Senator Hendren and others uh, affiliated with the group. It's not necessarily they're going to put forth just straight independent candidates in every race. I mean, it, 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 they, they very well may go with, uh, you know, just finding candidates that fit within the party structures, but right. that. Are more pragmatic, and so it's maybe that alters the dynamic quite a bit too. At moving forward, yeah, Michael, that could, that could be the case. Uh, you know, if they, but it, we'll have, we'll have to wait, remain to see what happens. It, from reading the materials, it looks like they're they're saying a, a pox on both of their houses, both Democrats and Republicans. It sounds like that they're looking for independent candidates, but you know, in a Republican primary. If they put up a candidate and it has the common ground label, then all of a sudden they're moderate, and that's the death knell in a Republican primary uh, in most parts of the state. So, again, I'm just curious to see what happens. Where are we going to be in six months, a year from now, and that who do they actually put up and who do they, what, what's, what side of the aisle do they pull votes from?
Yeah, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Senator Hendren noted that we're about to redistrict the uh, the General Assembly. Uh, how much is can that make much of a difference? The redistricting process, given the overall trends across the state. I don't think it'll be a massive shift, uh, but there there could be some movement there uh, because you are going to lose some seats uh, in the Delta or South Arkansas that will go northwest. And with the changing demographics that they've seen up there, uh, there may be some openings in two or three seats uh, that are kind of shuffled around uh, the state a little bit. But I don't I don't necessarily see you know a twenty or thirty you know district swing or something like that. But there may be something smaller and the single digits, uh, but that might be enough for them to be able to gain a footing and, and be able to move forward. Michael, more of a, uh, more than a footing? Uh, because the Republicans control all of redistricting, they're gonna do everything they can to make every district as Republican as possible and everything they can to stick it to the Democrats. I mean, they'll they'll figure out a way to put, you know, count, you know countless Democrats in the same district to kind of muck up the works. So in terms of they're not gonna create any swing districts unless it's just absolutely uh, necessary. So if anything, I think it makes common grounds, uh, common ground, their mission statement tougher because these districts are going to become more Republican. Got it. Gentlemen, thanks very much. Mr. Speaker, Jeremy Gillum, uh, Gillum, Michael Cook, thanks as always for being with us, guys. Come back soon. And that's our broadcast for this week. Thank you, as always, for joining us. See you next week. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89.